So today we're going to be working on the idea of using the Android to switch between the visibility of objects. So taking a quick look at where we did um, where we were last time, we have the idea that we have a couple of buttons declared. We have the idea for our color change button and our relative layout and background that we had already available. And what we're going to first look at is the idea of doing our visibility first. And so to take a look at that, what we want to first look at is we're going to use the idea of our text view to do so. And so if we look at our text view, we have it named here as a text view called silly words, and we have it already listed inside our import statement. We may have to make sure we initialize our text words as a text, or silly words, excuse me, as a text view using the find view by ID method. If we don't um, use the proper ID, it'll cause lots of problems for that. If I go over here to my XML for that that's attached to it, as you can see, I have a text view right here. And if I look at my text view, I if I look over here in the property section, we can see we have a property type of visibility, and we have by default is set for visible so we can actually see it. If we click over here to actually choose, choose from the options between it, we have three different options. We have visible, invisible, and gone. And if we take a look at this, we go over to the invisible, we can see that it simply just uh, makes it so we cannot see that the object is there, but we still have the space indicated by the blue lines here of the actual outline for the actual box object. And that we can see that for invisible. However, if we check the setting for gone, you'll notice that we do not have any reference to it whatsoever. The actual visible component is completely not there. There's no reference to it inside the GUI site at all. And so we want to keep that in mind that when we're using those three different visibility options, we have access to that. However, over here on the um, side for the display on the XML, again, this is there's no code attached to this. It's simply just a list of properties listed over here on the XML side. And we can see that it's Android colon visibility is equal to quotes gone. I can go back over here and change that to be visible, just in quotes, lowercase, just like that. I hit save and go back over to my design and bada bing, bada bang, my visibility is brought back and I can see exactly how it was over here. So I have the ability to see that right there. But again, the idea that um, XML is only for the layout for it, especially for the initial layout, we don't see any change happen or any code signed. Uh, <clears throat> We don't see any initialization or code happen on this side. It's just simply for the display, especially for the default display on that. And so to actually make any changes to that, we have to go into the code side or the .java file side of the activity to make that happen. So we're gonna leave this here for visible as default because we wanna be able to see when we turn on our app. But let me go back over to my activity side. And as we saw down here in our setup listeners, we have our listener for our on-click listener. And in our on-click, we have the method called to change colors. We would use it to change the colors for our app. And we have that so we could simply just call the change colors app. We're going to add that so we can do the same thing again, but make a new method so we can change the visibility. So we can just see how it works just to start off. And then we'll do a method to actually check it and do just like we had inside our original App Inventor app. So we can have it so it switches between visible or invisible as we work on that. So because, again, we're having this so it's only available to simply just this one activity and only seen internally for that, we'll make it a private method. And because it doesn't need to return a value, it simply just needs to execute. It'll be a void type. And because we're going to be changing the visibility, we have our name for that, because again, the name should reflect both what it is and what it does. And since this is affecting the visibility, we'll give that as its name. So change visibility. We indicate the parens so we can actually create it as a method. We align our squiggle so it's there. And I'm going to call it right now, even before I've done anything with the method, inside my onClick, just so we can test this out. So for our first shot, we're going to just call it change visibility down here. And so it's called, it doesn't do anything yet, but the way we're going to work this out is to change the visibility. It's just like doing a getter and setter inside regular Java. We have the visibility property and we're going to set a parameter. However, what's different is the way we do that. So we're going to use the silly words object like we were talking about up here, because silly words is that text object we've been playing with. And we're going to come down here inside our method and I'm going to go inside and we're going to type in silly words dot set visibility. And again, I'm typing this out even though I have the autocomplete because I want you to practice using the actual method calls and getting familiar with the structure as well as the practice of writing methods. How, when we're doing other um, method calls like this, say for example, we look just up here with um, our set background color, we typed in a method call or typed in a simply a list of parameters to the RGB method right there. However, with the parameter for visibility, we're gonna be using a constant that's built into the Android activity structure. To do that, or excuse me, the Android, um, we're going to use the constants both in the actual Android structure. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're typing view dot visible or gone all in caps. And the dot gone all in caps, view dot gone, shows that we're going to automatically change it to be gone. So we can't see it. And this is only a one-time thing, so no matter how many times I click it, it's just going to change it to automatically gone. That's all it's going to do. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I save. Again, using GitHub, I should make sure that gets committed to my GitHub account, making sure I have access to my code available later, and make a commit message explaining what we just did. Say, for example, adding a method for visibility. I click on my play icon so I can get that running. We've got our emulator back up and running on this, and I've got the screen over here. So again, we're going to check that change visibility method. So we have it, it will change the colors and make it so it goes from visible, as we can see right now, to gone based on the click of our button. We've already looked at that change colors method in our other project or other video that you can take out and look at on YouTube as well. But we have the idea that we're going to check on the change of visibility. For this first one, like I said, we're going to simply make it so that this visibility right here will disappear. It'll set it to the view.gone. When I call that method. So as I click this, as you can see, nothing happens. It, it's now gone and there's no way to see it. There's no reaction to it whatsoever. I can't select the text. It's not like it's just hidden. It is completely gone. I continue to change the colors and they will change randomly according to our change random color method that we've already written. And But however, nothing else happens within our set visibility because all it does is makes it gone. It keeps on making it gone. There's no change to that. What we want to do now is we want to make this go a little bit further and so we'll have it so it um, alternates between visible and gone based on what we click on the button. So to do that, we're going to use that logic that we talked about the other day in class and just use a regular if test to take that out to check on the visibility for it. So we're going to go ahead and just start that below here so we can actually look at the code. And the standard if test will apply. We have our if, our condition inside of parens, and then we have our event if we pass the test, and then our else if we do not pass the test, we have our, what we'll be doing if we don't pass the test. So for this one, we have to make a test based on the space under visibility. And so we're going to use these silly words. Dot get visibility. And that will return a constant int based on either view.gone, view.visible, or view.invisible. And because we're using an int, we can use the um, equals equals comparator. But the equals equals operator checks for the equality of this versus anything else, since we can use that on ints and booleans very effectively. So if our get visibility returns view.gone, so I'm going to go to view with a capital uh, V dot gone and all in caps because it is a constant. It's something that's specified by the language. So if it is gone, I'm going to make it so we can see it. So to do that, we just type in silly words. Again, the name of our object or our widget that we're using at this time. And then we're going to call set visibility. And again, like we did earlier, we're instead of passing it view.gone. So if it is gone, we'll set the view.visible. And it has to be all in caps because it is that constant that we're referring to. And so if it is invisible, we will make it visible. Otherwise, we'll just make it so it is invisible. So we'll take that line of code, we'll take it out, and we'll delete the blank line as well because we don't need it. And in our else condition, so if we fail the test, we're going to go inside here and do our silly words dot set visibility. And we'll pass it if it is already um, gone, not gone, but we can see it, we'll make it so it's view dot gone. And again, capital V for view dot gone, all in caps because gone is a constant. Visible is a constant, it's part of the view class. And it's a standard thing that we'll be using for that. We're going to go ahead and save our code. Again, if we are doing this for our regular project, we want to make sure we commit it to GitHub as well. So we have that commit because we made a major change by finishing this method. So we're going to go back to our emulator here. Again, so we have our test. If the visibility is gone, we will set the visibility on it to visible. Otherwise, we'll make it so it's gone again. So right now we have our um, app showing up on screen. And so we have again our method call right here. So it's going to call change colors, then change visibility. And it'll alternate now our visibility between either visible or gone each time I click. So I click on this, it goes away, changes color, change again, and comes back. And again, it disappears every other click. Because if it's already gone, I'll make it visible. If I fail this test, it's not gone, it is visible, I will make it gone. So we have two different options that we have right here. So it's either going to be visible or gone based on the actions of that click. And so if we pass the test, we'll change it. If we fail the test, we'll change it back. And so as you can see, every time I click, it changes color, but also every other click, it makes it either visible or invisible. So just to review what we've done here today, again, we have the idea that we have in our declaration section up here, we have some buttons that we're dealing with. We um, assign them a value using the find view by ID method. We call our setup listeners method. And then from setup listeners, we have it tell it what we want it to do. In this case, we call change colors and change visibility. Changing colors, it changes colors every single time. But we have our change visibility, so it'll alternate between visible and invisible using the idea of a logical control structure of an if test. If it is visible, 
aka the get visibility returns the value of view.gone using that constant that's built into Android. Then we'll set the visibility passing the constant of visible. Or if it isn't gone, um, on, it's visible, we'll make it so it is now gone, aka taking up no space inside the GUI, so it alternates back and forth between visible and invisible every time it clicks and changes that. Again, thank you again for watching my video. Come back again next time for how to make it so it'll open a new screen 